Mm, welcome to the Deep Three Podcast. I am your host, the one and only, the greatest Sam and Swami, Swam Sanity himself. Of course, with the big KOB, what's good, my guy? Same old, same old, you know. Why, why are you same old, same old, man? It's the playoff. What do you mean same old, same old? Yeah, this has been going on for a while, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. That's fair, that's fair, that's fair. All right, let's start us with some heat, cuz. All right, Kevin, lead us off with this. All right, you got some, got some spice? I mean, we, we've been looking at the, the Bulls the past couple of days with their, their moves, but yeah, there is, you still know they're in a rough spot when getting <laughs> Billy Donovan is the best move they've made in 12 years since getting Deros out of the draft. So, uh, still not, not that impressed, but uh, I guess we could be doing worse. We could be the Knicks or a lot of those other teams. So, hey man, I'm just saying, Tom Thibodeau at least got you a little further. I'm just saying, Froggy throw Thibodeau, Thibodeau, man, he's got he's got the stuff. He's got the stuff. Uh, we did hear in our chat that you were slightly praising Billy D over here. But what, what, what's what's the reason? What's the reason here? I mean, I think anything is better than Boylan. <laughs> yeah, so you already sold me on that. Egg, Eggman Boylan is a, is a no-go in our book. When the man makes you run suicides and you're being paid millions of dollars, I mean, like, if someone paid me millions of dollars to run suicide, I wouldn't mind. I'm not going to lie. I'm just saying, I'm getting paid mill just to run, like, three suicides, we good. But I'm just saying, when, like, you're a grown man. You can't, you can't be doing that. Right. But Billy D, also a college, former college coach, he does have the experience. I would just like to say that he was carried by superstar talent, in my opinion. Um, and that's not you, Stephen Adams. Stephen Adams? We don't respect you, okay? I mean, we like you, but like, game's a little washed. Let's be real. Um, for me, the only thing better than the Nuggets right now is those Morningstar vegan nuggets. You know what's up, Kevin? Buffalo, it's not a sponsorship, but hey, Morningstar, if you're watching or listening, I am your rep. I got you guys, all right? Like, think about this. I am comparing you guys better. Your single product is already better than the Denver Nuggets. And that's pretty tough to beat. I'm not going to lie, but... That was the backbone for me for the past three years. And look at these muscles, all right? I mean, it's a little weak, but hey, hey, we moved. <laughs> we're in Denver, you know. You know, we changed the lifestyle. We got to be healthy. That's the rule here. So, uh, I Kevin, that. I got a question for you. All right. That's kind of out of the blue, but I think just out of watching the Jokic, the Murray play against the old heads of Anthony Davis and LeBron, it just seems like a true, like, it's a great battle because you can see both perspectives of experience versus the young bloods who just never get tired. And we saw that in game three, um, which we'll get into a little later. But if you could build around a player that is under 25 right now, not including Luka Doncic or Zion, because who wants to build around them, right? That trash. You know, just be real at that point. Who, who would it be? I mean, who would it be? You know, I had my initial gut reaction. Uh, my... That- that one was Jaw. Like the first thought came to my mind, John Rat, easy, no problem. But now that I'm kind of thinking about it, I think one underappreciated person that's under 25, who if you built a team around them to start and gave them players that fit them, mm-hmm. I think it would be a scary team. Devin Booker. I think if you have an actual team around him and and chemistry. I don't see any reason why they aren't like a Nuggets kind of type team where they have this insane shooter and then other good players to go along with it. But I think you need to build around Devin Booker rather than doing anything like what the Suns are doing now. <laughs> well, that's fair. Hey, well, we got to give the props to the Suns. Right? There's Bubble Suns next gen. They, they undefeated, exactly. I'm pretty sure. Am I correct? Yeah. yeah. Undefeated. Uh, you did steal my sleeper pick. I'm not going to lie. I was like, yo, D-Book, that seems like a solid pick. Dang. So you went with Ja. Okay, if you had to choose a big man, who would you choose? Jokic. No hesitation. That's true. Technically, just like to say, he is already 25. I was going to say, I was 25, so. As I also tell the audience, I am older than Nikola Jokic still. Um, <laughs> but hey, man, you know, one day we'll be making those bills. NBA, G League, I see you. You need a high school team? I, I'll be there. I look like a high schooler, nice mustache. But um, my pick, I think it has to be Jason Tatum. I mean, I feel like I praise him a lot. I mean, if Matt was listening to us right now, he'd be like, 
he'd be yelling, hey, we got a surprise for you next episode when Matt comes in, just like to say, you'll notice it very soon. But Jason Tatum, revolu- he saved this franchise. I mean, to be real, Danny Ainge is a goon. He's a gangster. He's a mobster. The way he dealt these trades, the way he got rid of that washed up big three to get the Nets picked for life, then trading up with Philly and getting Jason Tatum instead of Markel Fultz. Think about how much of a change that is. And and Markel Fultz, then Lonzo Ball, then Jason Tatum. Hey, let me ask you, how many times has Lonzo Ball been to the playoffs? Markel Fultz? Markel Fultz got one, but he didn't do shit. He didn't do shit. Doesn't Um, count. Jason Tatum (laughs) literally is the face of this franchise. And I can see him being the face of any franchise. Think about him on the Chicago Bulls. Like, think about how much of a game changer he would be. Love it. I'm in. (laughs) <laughs> sold. Um, and the other thing I am sold on in terms of big man, I think it's Bam Adebayo. I mean, I think yeah. he really told us to shut the fuck up and I'm going to ball out. I mean, we saw the wrist. He blocked my boy, Jay Tatum. The man went 90 degrees on that wrist. Didn't break a single thing. Genuinely impressive. I was looking at this website called lineups.com to show the top 30 players. I don't know when the recent update was, but it seems like it was just for this year. This was out of July of this year. So pretty recent still, in my opinion. Let me, let me run down the list of just top, uh, top, tw- top, top 30 players under 25. Luca, obvious. Jason Tatum, second. Zion, third. Zion, third. Okay. Zion, third. Okay. Ben Simmons, four. Trey Young, five. Carl Anthony Towns, six. And then your boy, John Rand. Disrespect at number seven. That is unbelievable. That's insane. That is insane. Um, how, do you, how do you put Ben Simmons over him, dude? Like, I, I think, I don't know. I just feel like Ben Simmons does have unappreciated talent. He's on the wrong team, a team that has so much face value. He's definitely not that kind of guy. He has zero impact in that terms. I'm telling you, he's a San Antonio Spurs guy. Let's make it happen, all right? Let's make it happen. Um, they also got Bam at 14. They dumped Lonzo at 22. Let's see here. MPJ at 23 for playing like 10 games uh, in two years. Uh, and your boy, Laurie Marketing, 30th. Um, looking at this top 30, to be honest, I'm glad that this is actually the face of the frame, the fu- face of the future of the NBA. Like, I mean, I think I was going to be like kind of concerned, you know, when LeBron is coming to his, you know, the end of his, pr- I, actually, that's not true. LeBron, fine wine and dine, all right? Fine wine and dine. The man doesn't age. He ages properly, if anything. Um, but you're seeing a lot of the legends that we grew up with starting to fade away. Uh, D. Wade's gone. Mello, in our opinion, he's no longer the star Mello. Um, Chris Bosh gone, kind of stuff like that. My, my entire, entire San Antonio Spurs are wiped off the map. It's a new, it's a new era now. Um, and I guess I have to accept it. Um, that's the old head in me, but... Let's just get in the podcast now. Um, recent updates. I know we talked about it already. Billy Donovan, new head coach of the Chicago Bulls. Um, I know we kind of mentioned it, but in general, are you vibing with this, homie, or is this uh, is this a no go? I, I think it's it's like lukewarm. Like I, I'll Sorry. take it from what we had. I'm not thrilled about it, but I think he has the potential to do a lot of good for this franchise, but. If he can actually do it, I don't know. I, I'm still skeptical until I actually see some results. Mm-hmm. But again, anything is better than Jim Boylan, Egghead, the man, the myth, the legend himself. Uh, <laughs> so I will, I'll accept it for now. Uh, we'll, we'll see. We need, I just, we need more talent. We need better players and better chemistry. And I think we need that a lot more than we need a coach. And, I mean, let's be honest, you do have to give him a chance just because the whole front office changed, right? I mean, yeah. they got rid of the Paxson regimen. Uh, they got real people that have done a real job over the past year besides draft one star player and then flop with it after for the past decade. Um, Billy Donovan, I actually was a big fan of Billy Donovan um, back in when he was coaching uh, University of Florida. I like to say that he did coach back-to-back titles with your boy, Joakim Noah. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the player, Corey Brewer. Um, yeah. Corey Brewer, very washed up now. 
Yeah. Uh, and Al Horford. <laughs> Al Horford was also there on that okay. roster. Um, wow. That team balled out. Yeah, that, it was a, as ugly of a team it was. They balled out as great college players. Um, so I, I really respected that. Going to OKC, huge mistake. Uh, it's hard for superstars to respect college coaches because it's a different dynamic. College obviously respects the coach more, right? Because they gain the money, they gain the millions of dollars. NBA coaching ain't shit. Right? They can cut you out. And we've seen with the Bulls, how many coaches have they gotten for five years? It's like three different coaches in five years, which is nuts. Um, I think with Billy Donovan's experience, I think it might be a good fit um, from a personal standpoint. I feel like there's much better coaches. Like I'd rather have a Becky Hammond, to be honest. Sure, she's inexperienced, but this whole Bulls team is inexperienced at this point, right? I mean, you got to start from scratch. Uh, Kenny Atkinson, I know we keep saying it over and over again, but Kenny Atkinson, like, is a better version of Billy Donovan and what he could do and has the NBA experience to back it up. Like I said, Billy Donovan had superstars on the team. Chris Paul, Russell, PG, like, Kevin Durant, he carried them. Like, they carried him. So... Uh, hey, look, Bull fans, Kevin fans, Mad fans, good luck, good luck. <laughs> I hope I don't know. Did they disclose the contract terms? I don't, not yet. I don't think. Or not I, don't think they want to. I think they're scared of the backlash, to be honest. So I, I mean, I don't know if you saw the video with Zach Levine or Levine um, hearing about it while playing like Call of Duty. Oh, really? No. Yeah. He seemed like excited, um, but. I mean, as like I'm guessing, as a Bulls fan, we don't we feel pretty lukewarm about the Zach Levine. Yeah, part. yeah, yeah. No, that's fair. Yeah, let's shake it up. Let's shake it. Up. Let's go. Let's go young. All right, let's just go young. I'm be like cool. the Grizzlies. Be Grizzlies. All right, just get Jai and be good. You got Kobe, so you know we're good at that point. Um, other major news really is, as much as we want more basketball, players are probably super tired. So NBA is probably going to start 2021. Understandable, you know, with the NBA draft also being in like late November, probably around Thanksgiving. Um, there's just no time because then you need free agency. Um, no one's going to get paid. Um, you're okay with this as a fan or you need more basketball in your life? I mean, selfishly, I want more basketball, obviously, but I'd also <laughs> rather wait to have better quality basketball. And I think that's what we're going to get at the end of the day is if we wait and actually let players rest, especially the, these teams, like the Nuggets and the Lakers, like let them go on a vacation. <laughs> like, I think we're going to see much better basketball when everything comes back. Uh, and I'm I'm fine with that, if that's the case. Uh, but yeah, selfishly, I, I'm going to miss basketball on Christmas. Uh, but that's true. Yeah. That's true. Hey, man, we need a break, too. I know we work our butts off. Episode 41, just like to say, did not think we'd get this far, but <laughs> 600 listens. Thanks, fans. We'll praise you later and onward as well. Other interesting news. I don't know if it's really that interesting, but Gordon <laughs> Hayward got the fourth child and is a boy, finally. Uh, nothing wrong with girls. I mean, I respect the girl-dad mentality as well. Um, but I just misread and told Kevin this earlier. His name is Gordon Theodore Hayward. So he's, oh. the boy is G.T. Hayward. The man oh. is a Mustang, all right? man is a Mustang. All right. Um, G.T. Hayward it is. G.T. Okay. Hayward. Uh, awesome for him. Probably going to have a better video game career than a basketball career. Let's be real at this point. I mean, he got the money. He, he, he's, he's cashing in right now. Um, now, the question is, does he pull a Van Vliet and pop off all of a sudden now that he had another kid? Hey, man, we'll talk about it later, but we saw them. We saw Gordon Hayward somehow not be bad with the Celtics and not get injured. See, Gordon Hayward is Kevin Love. He's a slightly smaller Kevin Love. But they just get injured. They could be so good, but they just get injured immediately. They're just glass. They're glass jaws at this point. I love that comparison. Never thought about it. Smile. <laughs> think about it. I, I, want, I think Kevin Love is so underrated, but he can only last for like 40 games a season. So it's like... I guess I'd rather run with Joel and beat at that point, who would probably have played 10 more games than you, you know? So, um, Gordon Hayward, you better pop off because you had the Van Vliet syndrome, all right? It's time. <laughs> Let's get it. Giannis didn't get it. I'm just saying, Giannis didn't get it, all right? But other news, the new Kings GM, Monty McNair, commits to Luke Walton as the head coach. Luke Walton, you will never be welcome on this podcast. Let me make this very clear, Okay. You are an absolute shit of a player, as well as a coach. 
All right, you. He got so much praise when Steve Kerr was out with back surgery. He got so much praise for coaching that Warriors team. And it was so funny because the NBA still disrespected him and did not give him the head coach title at the All-Star game. He was not welcome there. Let's be real. You're not welcome here either. All right, fam. All right. Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, Draymond Green. You already got juggernaut talent. I hope you do good. I hope you do well at that point. I mean, let's be real. Luke Walton, is he the future for your Kings roster? I'm, do they have a choice now? Like, is there, uh, if I had, I wouldn't, I would say no, but uh, if the, if the front office is, is committing to them, maybe, uh, maybe they just got to make do with what they got, unfortunately, as ugly as that is. Uh, hopefully, hopefully it's more of a Jim Boylan situation where they're just saying that to save face and then next year comes around and they're like, yeah, Luke Walton, you're out. <laughs> Facts. I mean, let's be real. I think they're going to trade Buddy Heald. I mean, when he's a six man getting max money, it's like you're like Gordon Hayward, and, and Gordon Hayward's still playing better. Like, I'm just being honest. Like, Gordon Hayward's like 32. Got like a decade on you, boy. Um, mistakes, mistakes were made. Uh, Sack Town, forever Sack Town. I hope you guys change because De'Aaron Fox deserves way better. Yeah, jeez. Uh, Let's think about this. De'Aaron Fox, what could have been De'Aaron Fox and Luka Doncic in the Kings, De'Aaron Fox to the Dallas Mavericks. How dangerous could that be? Wow, that's scary to think about. Uh, that's just team fast. That's yeah. Just team fast at that point. Like, and uh, with the Zingas, too, as your pseudo big man, that's, that's scary. That's scary. Exactly. Uh, that, I would watch that. I would hate it because Dallas, but I would watch it a lot. Um, <laughs> But let's get into the real topics now. Um, I did siphon this from other podcasts a little bit, but I tried modifying it. I think we watched enough playoff basketball that we were genuinely impressed and genuinely disappointed by a lot of players here. Um, and I think there was more genuinely impressed impressions, I guess, that really kind of changed our mindset about things. Um, but... I kind of want to break this down, kind of want to do a playoff a reassessment of these players from the regular season to the playoffs. Um, let's just start with the, the, the player improvement before we start shitting on some of these players. And I, I know which one you're picking already, all right? We got you. We got you. I saved that for you. We saved best for last, all right? Best <laughs> for last. Um, I think the obvious pick here, number one, well, maybe not obvious, but I think we can both agree just watching the series so far. Uh, I think Murray and Jokic... Uh, I know we know Jokic was already an all-star, potential superstar, uh, already defining a superstar at this point. And I think Jamal Murray will will be, you hear it here, folks, a guaranteed all-star next season. There's the way this kid plays, uh, I know we're talking about in our group chat, I, I genuinely think uh, Jamal Murray has the best handles of anyone in the league. Um, maybe it's just pure bias because we're just watching him, you know, really closely for the first time for, what, two weeks now? Uh, but when you see it, no one can keep up with him. The crossovers are so deep. The the play last night when he went one on one against Caruso, he's like, I like, let's just do it. Like end of the fourth quarter, almost just one on one against Caruso, just like crossing over left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Drives in, stops on a fucking dime at the free throw line, just fades away. Caruso's already fucking out of bounds because he just kept going. It was beautiful. The it was. Perfectly executed, amazing handles the entire time. The ball never left exactly where he wanted it to go. It was perfect. I was so hyped. And I, it, he's just been playing like that the whole time. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> no, exactly. And I, I think you remember that play where he did a spin move on Danny Green, kind of lost control for a little bit, spun back, stepped back, three. And it was game at that point. He called game at that point. I mean, yeah. look, when the – the man is so confident. The man wears neon green shoes on the court. You know it's game, all right? It's game at that point, right? It's, you don't fuck with this man. Um, but we fuck with Jamal Murray. I think we can easily agree with that. Um, I think we're easily sold on Nikola Jokic. I can just hear, like, spiritual vibes from Matt. Just kind of, I told you so. I told you so. Uh, <laughs> even with the next player, um, Bam Adebayo. Um, once again, that block... Just the playoffs itself have been genuinely awakening and been a phenomenal performance. 
And look, I don't care about watching the East at all, to be honest. <laughs> to be honest, I mean, hey. yeah, you know, <laughs> we watch we watch the Bucks, but you know, we didn't watch the Bucks. We watched the Bucks. We just want to watch Giannis at that point. But this Miami Heat team, which we'll talk about later, has been. It's not like so. I don't know. What do you think about this Miami Heat team? Is it just surprising, or is it? Are we just like dumb for not recognizing it? I, I think they're just doing what they've done all season, but just tuning it up like a one notch in every aspect. Like they're playing like slightly better defense. They're being more aggressive. They're playing their starters longer, and that's just making them look substantially better, even though they're not playing much different than they have been. Like Bam's still doing what he did before, but we were always like, oh, like, I don't know, we're not we haven't seen him in playoff competition and now we're seeing him in playoff competition and he's still doing the same kind of stuff. And mm-hmm. that is very impressive. That's awesome to see and it's it's fun to watch that Heat team oh. do what they've been doing again against super competitive teams. Like no, I love I agree. It. um Look, when we saw that Milwaukee series, the way they just dismantled that team, we were like, oh, well, Giannis was injured. And I was like, well, to be honest, the Bucks won that game when Giannis was injured. Okay, I just got to be honest. Be honest here, all right? <laughs> um, I also want to bring up the point of the MVP votings and, you know, the NBA or the LeBron slight he had and how pissed off he was about how, like, disrespected he was. Um, not getting the votes. Um, I heard an interesting point where the NBA MVP is not given to the best player or the greatest player in the NBA. It's rather given to the best player that season exclusively. Like, let's be honest. I think LeBron is the best player in the NBA, and you think he still is. He's showing it at 35. Um, He still, there's a good chance he can still get to the finals. Um, he did it from both sides of the plate now, you know, East and West, he could do it. Um, but I, this Miami Heat team has been really, I think, I, I think I was just not woke from them, which is probably the wrong term to use because I feel like I'm too old to use like my terms now. <laughs> um, I heard people at work start saying, oh, I'm dead. But I feel like I've never heard that said before. And I was like, maybe I'm just an old head at this point. But the Miami Heat made me feel dead. Let's be real. I use it incorrectly, but whatever. And I don't think it's, and to be honest, it's not the Jimmy Butler factor. I think his influence is perfect, mm. but he's not been the most impactful player. I think he's more just the leadership guidance at that point. Bam really showed up. Tyler fucking Hero, genuinely playing hero ball in some of these situations. How, how does he make these shots? I don't get it. It just doesn't make sense. Um, Duncan Robinson being a better version of like Kyle Korver, JJ Redick type player, like comes out, makes threes, and does it well every time, like consistently, <laughs> right when they need it. Like I, I love it. I was hearing that a Kyle Korver comparison is disrespectful to Duncan Robinson. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. Duncan, Duncan Robinson, I, I, this kid, D two player, plays one year at Michigan on a transfer. I'm pretty sure he was a grad student. Goes to G League, that, that, kid, that kid is Miami Heat level. As much as I know how much you're not a fan of Miami itself, um, that, that, that's some real grind shit. Like, that's some, like, everyone hates us, and they just feed off that. But it's the Jimmy Butler factor. Yeah. Um, and Jimmy finally found a crew that thrives on the hate. What's the uh, thing there? Like, I, I love it. I love it, love it, love it. Facts. I hate that, uh, that, I, that I am so in love with this team now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's like you, you hate us because you hate us at this point. Um, <laughs> but even like the veteran like mix with a Jay Crowder, we've got our boy, our Marquette boys united again. Uh, yeah. And to be honest, Andre Godella, pretty whack. Like he's not good. The trade was not even worth it, and they're still doing pretty well. But let's be real. Let's give praise to the guy that's been there, to the Thickenton, the Dragon, Gory. Oh. Dragic, right? Goran Dragic, the dragon. The man could have, this, think about it, this man was back up to Steve Nash with the Phoenix Suns. That's, that's prime Nash, okay? Uh, the guy could have probably started for many teams, to be honest. He was drafted by the San Antonio Spurs and was traded. Think about this. The Spurs drafted this man, all right? Very upsetting now. But Goran Dragic, evolution as a player has been unreal. He's been able to change his game 
year after year after year. Uh, and he's still balling out, all right? He's balling out for a guy, and he's super underrated for what he does for this team. Um, I feel like I was supposed to praise Bam, but I feel like this this segment, which has just been Miami Heat at this point, yeah. because, I mean, like, they proved us all wrong. They proved us all wrong. Um, I know everyone said they're going to be Giannis stoppers. Um, to be honest, I didn't think that that was just kind of full of it. I was like, you can't really stop Giannis. Like, that's, that's back-to-back MVP, but Giannis is dead, all right? The Greek god has fallen, all right? It's over there. It's not over. Giannis, we love you. Come to the podcast. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you think this is an improvement in my opinion, but Anthony Davis, um, for a guy that hasn't been deep in the playoffs, um, can never really get out of the first round, uh, finally get a chance to really showcase his skill set. I know there's criticism on my end saying that as soon as he got after the first round, um, the Lakers' only chance of winning really depends on Anthony Davis not fucking up the situation, right? And we kind of saw that in the first game um, – I already forgot who they played last round, uh, but they smoked them. I did smoke them, all right? They lost the first game. What was it? Rockets? Rockets. I already forgot. Them. Rockets. I'm sorry, but it wasn't pretty. It wasn't pretty, but small ball defeated the Lakers first game, and then they're like, wait a minute. We have four tall guys. Let's just play four tall guys at this point. And they killed these Rockets. They squashed them. Anthony Davis' performance so far, I know we're showing some stats. I believe he's averaging like four blocks a game or something in the past two series, which is oh, nuts. Man. It was like yeah. 30, 30, 10, 7, and four blocks. Like, it's nuts. Like, no and one plays that. I think it was like 48% from three or something like that. Something insane. Yeah. yeah. No, that's gross. Like, it's scary how reliable Anthony Davis has become. Not reliable in terms of. You know, just like oh, obviously he's a superstar talent, but the way he's evolved his game over the years and understanding that he had to change, and he runs the fast breaks too. Like, I respect that out of many big men. Uh, Jokic does that. Joel Embiid, a little lazy, a little fat, not gonna lie, unhealthy, but he still runs it. Uh, not many big men do it, so I can respect that a lot. Um, and able to get good quality shots and reliable shots at that point uh, from the three. Um, he has a signature fadeaway, he's got that dark fadeaway a little bit. Um, this is an all-around performance. It's been genuinely impressive because we never got to see this. This is the first time we're seeing him get this far and actually show up. Uh, I mean, game two, game two killer against the Nuggets. That was just speechless at that point. That was some real Kobe shit. That's what I'm saying. So, that was a Mamba right there. Yeah. Um, and I think the group we need to praise though, because we never praise this team. All right, we never praise this team ever again. Never again will happen. Rudy Gooby and Spider. Uh, those teams really that, – that, that squad really picked it up. I know there's probably going to be a lot of backlash just because, you know, Rudy Gooby and the coronavirus uh, didn't look pretty. You know, Rudy, stick, stay away from the microphones, all right? We, we don't want you touching those. But uh, that combo was scary good. I mean, it took a third seed Nuggets to get seven games, and they lost on a buzzer, you know. It yeah. just went off the rim. Like, they could have been it. I don't think they would have done well the next round. Uh, I think they actually probably lost, to be honest. Like, Clippers would have easily beat them. Um, but I, I got to give a shout-out. Rudy Gobert really proved me wrong out there. Uh, even Spider Mitchell. I mean, that's what we saw the true battle between guards. You know, Jamal Murray and Donovan Mitchell really brought up the true basketball nature out of them. You know, when you're averaging 40 points casually, you know, that's when it's scary, you know, in my opinion, you know. Uh, but I don't know if you have any thoughts on – the Utah Jazz as a whole, or as these two guys? No, I, I think especially Mitchell was really impressed me. I think a lot of people at the beginning of the season, especially, had a lot of questions whether or not he was going to step up, you know? Like, was he going to be the star that at least the Jazz wanted him to be and the Jazz thought he would be? And I think he, he really proved that during that series against uh, the Nuggets. Even though they lost, I think him and Gobert are both really played to their fullest. And you got to respect that always. And mm-hmm. it was fun to watch, too. Like, they're, they're a good pair, just like Murray and Jokic. And I love watching both of them play. No, exactly. I mean, it was... Like I said, bubble basketball has been the best basketball I've seen in a very long time. Like, in terms of 
like quality of the game. Um, yeah. We've had very little blowouts, which has actually been really awesome. Like even in the regular season, like very few blowouts. Um, but genuinely impressed. But we'll, we're done with that. All right, we're done with praising these people. All right, we're here for the hate, Kevin. We're here. We're drinking the hate array too much. Um, let's save. Let's save the guy that you want to roast. I'll give you a full on session just to roast him. All right. Well, let's save it because, ladies and gentlemen, when you hear Kevin roast, he means that shit. All right. He lives it. That, that's that's tatted on his heart. All right. That is tatted <laughs> on his heart at that point. But um, I, I'll start this off. All right. Pascal Siakam, genuinely disappointed, all right? Not during the regular season. I thought he played phenomenal. Maybe we're putting too much weight on his shoulders already. Um, but I'm just saying when you have the experience and you got to the finals and you got a title, sure, you were with Kawhi, but, I mean, you were the guaranteed second person right there. Like, it was definitely passed onto you as much as it was. Uh, and he showed it during the regular season, but this is, I don't know. I, this playoffs was very lackluster from him. I don't know if it was a confidence thing. Um, defensive presence was not there, but even from an offensive standpoint, when you have six inches, you know, on your defender, you know the rule, Kevin. You know the rule. Post up, back them down, pack holes, get money, dunk it on this house. All right, that's what you do. That's what you do. And you're, they're not doing it. I just don't get it. I just don't get it. Do you, what, what do you have to say about Pascal Siakam? I I think it was. That that's my only explanation is that it was some sort of pressure confidence thing, and that. Like, he wasn't used to being as much of a focal point as he was, especially during this playoffs, and he just wasn't handling the pressure well, I think, uh, unfortunately. Because, again, we saw him during the season put up crazy numbers. We saw him during the season multiple times lead his team to victory, not just, like, contribute to the victory, but he was the playmaker. He was the one that was doing the most for the team. And that's saying a lot coming from a team with like Kyle Lowry and Van Vliet and people like that. Like he is really impressive, especially, or at least during the regular season. And then it just really fell flat during the playoffs. And it's, it's sad to see, but I think that goes to show how competitive these playoffs are, you know, like it's, it's tough. Uh, I think it, again, yeah, it was just unfortunate that he, I think he crumbled to the pressure or went out. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, like, to be honest, like Fred Van Fleet, and that's not disrespect Van, Van, Fred Van Fleet. I like to say this man has his own sneaker deal, uh, his own custom shoe uh, with And One. He revived And One, for the record. Uh, shoes are baller. I'll just show you later. But um, I don't know. I just like, I, like I said, as much as I like Fred Van Fleet, I don't want him to be the carry. I don't want Kyle Lowry, you know, at 34, 35 carrying this team it, it needs to go through Calo should just be the voice for this team you know that's the Marcus Smarts or the um I don't know who else yells we can talk about who didn't have a great yelling team when that was the Clippers let's be real uh they had a lot of bark but no game at that point um Pascal we love you I think got paid too quickly to be honest like you paid like three years to be honest not even three years like two years um I think it's well deserved, just not yet in my opinion. But he already got it, so you know, good for you, man. Um, but I hope next year. I mean, I'm, I'm with Nick Nurse coaching. Like, I will not be surprised if they're the second seed again. Like, I'm just very confident. As long as I run it back, like the team's good, the team's great. Uh, yeah. Uh, who Who do you guys are disappointing factor? You want me to just just go into it? No, no, no. You gotta save the heat. You gotta save the heat. All right. All right. I, I think. The- uh, someone who I hyped out a lot of the season, uh, begrudgingly to some people, uh, I really wanted Dwight Howard to step up a lot more than he has. And he really has just been, granted, he is, isn't get, getting as much playing time as during the regular season. And that's fair. But that, that's how you should coach a playoff team is like put the starters in for longer during the playoffs. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> um, uh, but anyway, I, I think when he is on the floor defensively he's okay but i think in general he's just not contributing as much as he should mm. i think he's getting way less rebounds than he should he should be able to box out almost anyone like that man is so strong he should be able to box out most people even if they're slightly bigger than him like he's just almost pure muscle it's impressive and i don't he should be able to box someone out like jump up get the rebound most of the time like I don't know how 
someone like Gobert can get way more rebounds than Dwight Howard at this point. Like, I know they're, I know Gobert's like young and Dwight Howard's a little old and uh, decrepit at this point, but still, like, I don't know. He's just been playing compared to the regular season a lot worse, I think. Um, Mm -hmm. Not getting as many points. And when it is, they're either second chance points that are completely uncontested or ugly baskets, I think. Uh, I don't know. I feel like he's just not being as helpful to the team. And I think, I don't know, I I was hyping him up, but it might be worth looking for another bench big man. I mean, McGee's not going to do it, so I don't know. Yeah, so I think Dwight Howard's role is like JaVale McGee when he got signed with the Warriors, where it's like, hey, I just need a big guy. Like, that team just did not have a bad, big guy, right? They're a small ball team, but they just need big man fodder at that point. But, I mean, to be honest, I think Dwight Howard put us all wrong in terms of what he could have done and could do. Um, I think he's been a little disappointing, especially in this current series. Yeah. Um, I know he got into the head of Jokic for one of the games, and really game two. Uh, but Jokic was just like, oh, wait, it's just Dwight Howard. Like, I'm actually a superstar talent at this point. Um, <laughs> Dwight Howard. And you know how much I hate Dwight Howard and then learned to love him this season. Uh, I think Dwight Howard still has the same old school antics in terms of how he played. does a lot of this elbow game, yeah. which is really, like, it's not fun basketball. It's just, like, I can just, like, bully. It's, like, it's bully ball at that point, right? It's not, like, actually good basketball. Uh, so I can see, like, where it gets really disappointing at his end. But I think along those lines, I want to say the Lakers bench is pretty bad. Like, I mean, you know, when you when you sign JR, like, as your, like, last man to fill, and Dion Waiters, like, I'm not, I'm not feeling good there. Uh, Danny Green been super disappointing. Uh, Alex Caruso, for, pretty good. All right, He's got a good combo. He's white Dwayne Wade at this point when it comes to alley-oops with LeBron. Um, but, I mean, let's be real, right? It comes down to duos. When you have a duo, you don't really need much of the team. You just need people that can shoot the corner three at this point. But, no, that's a good point. I think Dwight Howard's a nice sleeper pick in terms of, you know, what he should be doing, I guess you can kind of say. Yeah. I think the controversial one here, uh, what, what, what's, what's to say together, Giannis? Um, and I think you brought up a good point uh, in our little group chat here that I don't know it's not, it may not be necessarily Giannis, but maybe you want to wrap it up as the Bucks or the coaching staff. I, I don't know. Like, yeah. the only reason I would blame Giannis is that I don't think he has a leadership presence. I don't, he doesn't have a voice, in my opinion, because that's not the kind of player he is. Like, he gets pumped up, but it seems like it's more self pumped up. You know, when he talks, he talks about his bros and not the team. Yeah. And, you know, that defeats the kind of the whole purpose when you're kind of building a team. But the team paid Eric Bledsoe big dollar money to be a starting point guard. And that man cannot do shit in the playoffs. All right. Spends, plays one game in the playoffs, phenomenal. Downhill immediately. Uh, think about this. They could have had Malcolm Brogdon. They said, uh, it'll cost too much for a rookie of the year. And I was like, well, the guy was rookie of the year, just saying, in my opinion. But Chris Milton. He, did, he does Chris Milton things, right? There's, he can't be a face of the franchise. If you're honest, Lee's, he has to be the face of the franchise at that point. But uh, I know there's good optimism that Milwaukee is going to be paying the luxury tax to go get some people. So we'll have to see at that point. Um, but, I mean, going on the long side of the coaching staff, you can't – when you're back-to-back MVP, your superstar talent, what is he, like 26 years old? Not even probably. 26. He's like 26. Young talent is not playing 40 minutes a game in the playoffs like what are we doing here like what are we doing are we just joking like like it's disrespectful it's disrespectful like to your fans especially but also to just like at almost the other teams like you just are like oh we don't need to play Giannis the full 40 minutes we got to save him for the like later games the later series you know we got to save him for the finals or whatever their logic was like it's disrespectful and then you get dominated by a Heat team that is this ragtag group of nobodies that wipe the floor with you against the MVP. That's just embarrassing, honestly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, like, to be honest, I'm pretty sure he averaged just as many minutes as LeBron does this final, but LeBron gets wins. I'm just saying. LeBron gets wins. 
Uh, I mean, yes, he has an Anthony Davis superstar talent, but I'm just saying when you're the best team in the East, you better show up as the best team in the East, and they did not do that. When you go 3-0 and and then you get injured and then <laughs> your, your all-star teammate is the one that carries it, you know, it doesn't look good as a franchise. Um, I think there's a big chemistry issue. And I think along those lines, Giannis doesn't take enough shots from three as much as he bragged about. Yeah. Like I said, game three of the Miami Heat series, 0 for 7. 0 for 7. He took one three and missed it in game two. Two for five, game one. And he made one. I was like, wow, you got 100% from three. And I was like, oh, yeah, he made one shot. That's why. You know, your game becomes predictable. He really has to change and evolve this game as much as he supposedly praised it. Um, what he didn't change was his free throw game, 33% game one, seven, 69% game two, 58% game three, 50% game four. I know he got injured, but I'm just saying, you call this MVP talent, but you're not playing like MVP talent as... For me, MVP talent is most valuable player. It doesn't mean entirely scoring. It means can you facilitate, can you get your other teammates going? And maybe it is a team issue at that point, right? Maybe it's just a team is poorly built. Um, and we played 2K, all right? We got Chris Milton, we got Brogdon. It didn't work out, all right? It just didn't work out for us. Um, <laughs> and maybe it's happening in real life. Maybe it just doesn't work out with this roster. Um, as much as Giannis is the hometown kid, the guy deserves way better in terms of actual players. Hey, I'm just saying, LeBron takes less money. Giannis to LA. Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. Let's make another juggernaut. And then everyone can hate on us, all right? That's, that's how it works. Actually. Um, do you have any last thoughts on Giannis? Before we talk about the heat, and not the I, heat, but the heat. I hope the the Bucks coaching staff learn their lesson, and I'm sure if Yama stays, they'll be back next year. Uh, I think he just has the ability to carry any team to the playoffs, at least. Uh, and I hope they learn their lesson and play him 40 more or more minutes a game instead of just barely 30 minutes a game. Trash. All right. All right. Let's, let's get the heat out now, cuz. Let's get the heat out. Who is the number one disappointment in this entire playoffs? What is tatted on your chest, sir? Paul fucking George. Who, who, who is this guy? Paul George. Never heard of this man. Paul oh, disappointment oh. playoff P George. <laughs> fucking trash. Don't call yourself playoff P and then not show up in the playoffs. Fucking embarrassing. Oh, my God. It, uh, so, I wanted to look up some stats to back up my to back up my hate, you know, a little <laughs> bit. Uh, so they had uh, what was it, eleven playoff games, mm-hmm. in the two series, uh, if I have that right. But still, of the of those, four of it, four, only four of the games did he ever get stats above his regular season average. Four games. Four. Everything else, uh, way below. He had game, four, three games of those scored 10 or less points. Mm-hmm. That's embarrassing, dude. That's embarrassing. I don't, yeah. you pretend like you're this star player that the Clippers make all these trades for you to get. And then you just shit the bed during the playoffs after talking all this shit? After talking shit to Dame and fucking CJ? And you're like, oh man, I'm so good. I'm gonna make it to the finals with the Clippers. And then you shit the bed. You shoot fucking 20% from three sometimes. You score nine points in a game. Ten points in game seven against Nuggets. Ten points. Two for 11 from three. I, if this was a normal job and someone was underperforming at that level, they would be fired so fast. Paul yeah. George, embarrassed. Yeah, I mean, this man should be homeless at this point. I mean, let's be real. Um, uh-huh. Truly a, for a man that was considered a potential MVP last season, um, to do a three- Three episode special to return to OKC only to ask for a trade the next year to go to LA Clippers. I'm not selling you. I'm not going to the Lakers. I'm going to the Clippers. Oh, what? Going to the Clippers? You signed with Kawhi? Okay, cool. You signed with a team that already made the playoffs consistently as well. Um, and you show up with stats. What is he shooting? He shot 
I believe less than 40% this playoffs. Uh, threes were lackluster, shooting like a third, I'm pretty sure, 33% from three. Yeah. Uh, did not show up. I just remember his comments when he was at Indiana, yelling at CJ Miles, telling him that I get the last shot. Paul George, what the fuck did you do this series? What are you doing? What what did you do? Absolutely nothing was a thing. You're actually dead weight. We kind of called it. I was more questionable. You were pretty confident Paul George would be dead weight for this Clippers team, and it showed right here. And what pisses me off is when Paul George goes to the post-game conference and makes these silly comments and doesn't live up to the hate, and he makes the statement saying that this wasn't a you know, championship-bound team yet. And it's like, are you fucking kidding me? You have, what, the what? supposed... Cheap-ass team? With Patrick Beverly, Lou Williams, Montrez Harrell, Kawhi Leonard, and you, Paul George, and you're saying, uh, we're just not a championship-bound team. Literally, get the fuck out of here. If there was any other player on that team other than Paul George, you would have been a championship-bound team. I would have rather had the fucking, I don't know, Chris Middleton? Great. Perfect. Perfect spot. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. You hear it here, folks. Chris Milton, greater than Paul George. Look, PG-13, change that name to G, G7 G at this point, all right? Because you're playing some kitty shit over here. And Dang. Look, I mean, I built a robot in high school, already would have a better field goal percentage than him. I, I, can, I can easily guarantee that, all right? I can guarantee that my robot could ball out better than Paul George. Uh, Paul George... Never, ever will be welcome on this podcast. Fucking embarrassment to the league. To the league. You heard it. All right? L.A. doesn't want you. As Kanye says it, no more parties in L.A., my friend. Get out of here. All right? Go back to fishing. All right? Let's be real. (laughs) Man, I used a lot of energy with that. I don't know. I I think you you built up some sweat, too. I had to get that out of my system, though. (laughs) Hey, I feel you. But... Look, we haven't gone to the heat yet, all right? We still got playoff basketball to talk about, all right, homie? So let's get it. 